So, uh, Ricard, uh, do you have another topic uh, we can talk about? Well, well, it's the big show. <laughs> Welcome to TFS Pod, otherwise known as the Few Show Podcast. What was that? <laughs> this is 24 7 Lou, and that's. It's Rick Hard. Lou, you can't be the only one with a singing intro. <laughs> oh, and that's. <laughs> Well, it's one man band. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there, there, we go. <laughs> there we are. Yes, folks, welcome <laughs> to the TFS Pod. Also, a few show podcasts. I'm on show on YouTube. I'm on show on your girl's heart. Number one show in a small island in the Pacific. I will not name it. Yes, and folks, we've got a large program for you today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now. Good one, good one. So yeah, as uh, Ricard's mentioning there, yes, we were talking about uh, the Big Show signing with, uh, oh sorry, not the Big Show, Big Show's still in WWE, but Paul White uh, is with yes. AEW. So yeah, we're talking yep. about that. He has become elite. So what news do we have there, uh, Ricard, on that? Uh, so the news kind of broke a little bit earlier this week. Um, Big Show, also known as, uh, or Paul White, as you mentioned, uh, you know, we could go. We could we could play around. The Giants, if we want to go all the way yeah. back to the nineties, yeah. has yeah. signed with AEW, and I believe his role at the moment that is being officially named is he's going to be on one of AEW uh, Elevation. Yes, you know, uh, which is a hype based show. It's all about elevate, elevated uh, hype. <laughs> 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 um, uh, he's going to be a, a commentator, and uh, along with uh, is it Tony Schiavone? Yeah. On on the show, um, but whether or not he becomes an in ring competitor is up for speculation right now. But uh, yeah, that's that's a, that's some interesting news, and we could also talk about what's been going on with AEW getting uh, older stars, and because yeah. they've been they've been making some moves in that regard, uh, Sting. Yeah, earlier, please, earlier this year. Please do not get a lot of people in there. Please do not go that route. I do not want to see. Yep. Next up, Kevin Nash. You know, oh, just get the old WCW gang all back together. Oh my! As long God. as you don't put Kevin Nash in the booking committee, like, <laughs> like they did. Like oh, they did back in '99. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he don't just comes that. in a wheelchair. Like, sorry guys, broke my quads. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> like, I was just making up my. I was just lacing up my boots and suddenly my quads are gone. I'm gonna go get I'm gonna go get some water at the water fountain and just <laughs> I just heard a pop. The water pop the water fountain just took my my, my quads off. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so what do you what, what do you guys think about this move of uh Paul White on uh, AEW? Uh, one well, man um, Oh let me ask yeah. one man go, go ahead. I mean, um this is the first time you know, Paul White slash the Giant has been in, in TNT since 1999. You know, this is this is pretty uh, pretty big. <laughs> no pun intended. But uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's uh, it's I, I, I you know Paul White as a as an entertainer. Ah, we, this is a, this this is somebody that actually we could have talked about in the segment. He in, the, in our last segment, he was in a movie too. Yep. Uh, but anyways, yeah. Jingle all the way and TV show. He was at and he was in the Water Boy, oh. Captain Insano. <laughs> anyways, well, I digress from that. Um, Paul White is actually a very versatile character. I mean, he's funny. You know, he's well spoken. You know, he's he can he knows how he knows how to you know articulate. He's uh he's well like like when he does interviews, he's, he's very very composed. Has no uh, problem wearing a diaper. Yeah, at all. He has no problem wearing Diamond Dallas Page fake teeth. Um, <laughs> uh, he's done uh, show Sumo uh, wrestling. Was, uh, show Kishi. Yeah, he was Show Kishi. Um, he's he was uh, he was an oversized John Cena. Um, uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Hold, burritos. Hold on, hold on, hold on. One man band. Stop dancing around the subject. Well, you know what's going to happen. They're going to bring him I, on. I know exactly. They're going to put him on against Shaq, and it's going to exactly. be one of those kind of. Oh. Exactly. But That's please exactly do not happen. do that to that guy. Well, 
I hate to say this, but I think that's exactly where this is headed. And I would not be surprised. You know what? Now that you mentioned that, I would not be surprised that the reason they even started talking to Sha- about Shaq was probably because they knew that Paul White was on, on his way. They probably already spoke to him prior to, to, yeah. to his contract lapsing. And they probably said, hey, look, we'll get that program that, that you wanted to do with, with Shaq. We'll get that program handled and we'll make it happen. Yeah, you know, just just come on by. We'll we'll give you we'll give you a nice little contract. I'm no, 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 no. Get it right. Get it right, woman, man. We'll give you an ironclad contract. Oh, oh excuse me, <laughs> ironclad contract. Oh my god. All uh, all uh, two thousand and was it two thousand and thirteen? I think it was maybe. maybe uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that well, sounds that about is, right. Yeah. I, I remember that. Um, yeah, he was he was uh he was he was weapon of mass destructing everybody with with his you know his. Just everybody's face. Um, <laughs> Back I when mean, a punch to the face became a signature move. When yeah. he used to do this before, okay. and it was like, "What? Okay, just punch a big man, just punch in the face." Okay, and now Damn. it's, "Oh my god!" Yeah, <laughs> I mean, the thing the the thing with this is, look, I, I, I it's an interesting signing, but AEW needs to be careful because AEW is already they're starting to tread into that into that early TNA. Slash, you know, end of WCW, beginning of WWF, um, invasion kind of deal, where they're getting all these talents that, you know, had a prime, you know, Paul White in this case. Uh, you have Sting now. Sting. Yeah, he was big. He, he was a big deal in WWF. Let's get him. Yeah. So, Sting. Oh, he was. He was. He was the poster boy for for. Uh, for WCW for all these years and nothing against Sting. I love Sting. One of my top five all time favorite wrestlers. But you know, it's like, come on, man. Like the, these spots can be give, given to other people. Like I get it. I know why you're doing it. That's why that's why they had to use Chris Jericho as the first AEW champion to give us some credibility. To give the, the, the brand the brand some name. Like, hey look, a former WWE champion is AEW champion. You know, and and then John Moxie being the second one, you know, was the champ too. So it's I get why they're doing it. It's 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 brand name, and even though he's not going to be in a wrestling capacity, part of it part scared. of it has to be that they're trying to get the casuals. Yeah, the the the, the cash the Shaq versus the Shaq versus Paul White thing, I feel is going to happen. I mean, it's there. They're both on TNT. It's good for the brand. It's good for the network. TNT is going to be eating it up because they're going to be like, oh, yeah, it brings us exposure. Yeah, yep. they're going to be like, oh, wow, Shaq. Pizza. Yeah, there you go. Hey, Shaq, Shaq I, I'm pretty sure, owns a couple of those franchises. Yeah, he does. And I'm he pretty does. sure Big Show probably likes, uh, likes to eat it. Um, you know, <laughs> no, no, the rivalry, the rivalry, the rivalry will entail Big Show going, I like Pizza Hut better. <laughs> oh, God. No, but he's lost weight, too. That's so the rivalry will start. You no, know, he has. He has. No, he's 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 doing great. He's. I mean, he's got abs for Christ's sake. Like that's amazing. Oh yeah, Big Show got in shape for that match. That yeah, never ended up happening. Hey, closest, he kept- the closest we got. The closest we got was the, the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. Uh, I believe it was the one Corbin won, uh, where the very intro of the match was Shaq and Big Show having a stare down. That eventually saw all of them get, you know. Ganged up on by everybody else in the battle royal, and then <laughs> which was uh, it was a moment, but it's like that's not a singles match. Yeah, so so we'll we'll probably see that coming along along the way. I, I like the part about at least that they mentioned how he'll yep. be um part of uh, what was it in the show that you said um, AW Elevation Elevation. So good, you're gonna. Yep. Have- you're gonna have a like a, a voice that's uh, been in wrestling, uh, calling action on on guys that are coming up, like an NXT kind of style thing. So I kind of like that. Where there's still there's still guys are getting their chance, they're getting their shot on AEW. I just I, I know it's gonna be rough to get them on on the bigger show Dynamite, but yeah, keep on doing that stuff. I know we're going through all the stuff with the pandemic, but I bet I bet that if they would have been away from this pandemic, uh, where we're, you know certain places are shut down or limited capacity. Um, there would there would be a lot of AW shows out on the road and I, I would oh they'd go. be drawing they'd be drawing crowds yeah, yeah for sure go. yeah I mean I, I went I went to one at least last year before all this stuff happened and I and when they were down here in Miami and I enjoyed those shows well, so 
Well, here's the thing. They they were actually talking about coming to Miami this in February. They they were they were talking about apparently they were getting kind of like they were getting kind of like cabin fever syndrome in, in Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. So they wanted to change locations. And Miami was supposedly the place that they wanted to come down to. Oh, good. But then at the last minute they nixed it. I guess logistics oh. the logistics didn't work. But that was the idea. I, I was getting ready to, to as soon as they announced the show in Miami, I was getting ready to buy tickets or tell you guys. They were, looking, they were looking at infection rates and going, Yeah, let's let's take a let's yeah. take a moment. Just bring a dog. Just bring the COVID sniffing dogs. <laughs> like, 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 like the heater doing. I, I know. I, I know. I know. We're getting away from the subject of Big Show, but yeah, uh, Big Show on AEW. Okay. Oh, so- I think you didn't ask for my opinion on it, but I was gonna say. Uh, oh, really? Oh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, 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 it was. I'm sure it was an oversight. I was saving the best for last. It was a giant oversight. <laughs> 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 no, I was gonna say one thing that we don't talk about is. Um, at least I, I feel like it, it should be mentioned. Uh, having a veteran in the backstage area to really give advice to some of these people, yeah, I like that. Uh, really pays off. It's it's not just the stuff they do on camera uh, that that's important. It's the stuff they do off camera, and when you talk to a, when you hear when you hear these interviews with a lot of the older older uh, gen wrestlers, a lot of them say, you know, we don't see the same initiative or that same drive in the younger people to ask us questions to uh get feedback from us a lot and at the performance center that's what we're there for but when you're on the main roster you you should still be trying to learn grow develop change right. and adapt and it's not you don't see it with a lot of the guys who make it to the show some of them some of them are like yeah let me get to the big show the, the, the no pun intended uh to, to to raw smackdown or aw dynamite in, in AW's case, let me get on on TV, and then and then they're like, "Oh, I don't need feedback anymore. I, I've made it to the big things." Um, which it, it's not the way to go, and hopefully, Big Show can be that that force for for really uh, mentoring uh, people trying to find their footing. Because there's several of those people in AEW that you can see they have the potential, and they've got the they've got the tools. They just might need the direction, yeah. and hopefully he can provide that. Well, he he's clearly got the experience. I mean, you know, he's. Oh, he's you, you're not in the business. You're not in the business for over twenty years, and without without. Yeah. And and consistently, at least, in enough of a large program. Uh, <laughs> I assure you, I assure you that is not intentional, folks. It's slightly intentional. <laughs> um. <laughs> To be to be involved in in major storylines for the most part um, for that long and and you didn't know you don't have something you could give to the younger generation. Mm-hmm. One hundred. Well, you know, well, not only like you got a guy that's been around since ninety five. You know, he's been he's been he started out in TNT with Nitro. You know, his first match for Christ's sake, he won the he won the world title in his first match. Yeah, and. And he and he was a champ for quite a while, actually. The only reason why they even took the belt off of him was because Hulk Hogan um, went to turn to be the third man in the NWO. But if it had not been for that, he probably would have been the champion for a little longer than that. You know, mm-hmm. so you got a guy that started out as a champ. You know, he, he was young, but he was he was believable. He was a believable threat. Because obviously he's seven foot. What he's like? What seven foot two? Maybe seven four? Oh yeah. When you look imposing yeah. like that, you you, yeah. you can you can you can make it. Suspension of disbelief is not difficult. <laughs> yeah, I mean he had he had he had long hair. He was he was very for for his size. He was he was you know they build him at five hundred pounds, but he was like maybe four fifty. But look, this is a guy that was four hundred and fifty pounds and could do a kip up. You know, like mm. like that's that's impressive. You know, I'll never forget. Yeah. Actually, and it was 1997. This guy, you know, I'm, I'm, I know where this is going a little off, but just to give you like the backstory, it's like I remember he was he was wrestling Kurt Hennig, aka Mr. Perfect, and Kurt Hennig had just done the perfect flex on him, he got a two count, he kicked out, and then 
he uh, said, said something, and then uh, Tony Schiavone, he did the kip up, and you hear, and that 500 pound man is up. And then he chokes, he chokes him. And then this was, this matter of fact, this was the show, if I remember correctly, this was the show that uh, Sting came out, and I believe, I believe this was the one where uh, they had, they had Stings in the crowd. <laughs> and they and they couldn't figure out who was the real stings. Ooh, the stings. imposter stings or the oh, wow. the cops. Yeah, and then and then, but this was this was be, this was staying actually like doing a, a run in against the uh, NWO. But uh, this is a guy like I said, he he's got tons of experience, you know. Then he went to then he went to the real. You know, I, I'm gonna say real because WCW was good. I like WCW, but he went to the big time supposedly, and um, he went to the big show. The, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to avoid it, but all right. Um, <laughs> Too easy. The, the, he, he went to the big show. Oh, go. by the way, folks, and, keep on remembering uh, drinking game whenever we say big show. Go ahead. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, geez. Look, we're trying to send people <laughs> not to the emergency room. Oh, there you go. You know? Yeah, I know. Yeah. That'll, that'll be a big show. I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. An extremely, an extremely big show. But anyways, so um, you know, you had you had him at WWF, and he was he's, he he was actually known as Paul White at first, mm-hmm. yeah. and they didn't give him the Big Show name until like a couple of I want to say a couple of weeks later, and you know he, he he had some trouble finding his footing at first. I mean, he won the belt, he won the belt about a year into being in the program, but then uh, there was a they, point where they sent him back to developmental. They sent them back down to OVW because he, he gained a lot of weight and he was just kind of sloppy, and so they they took they sent him back so that he could learn he could he could learn the the basics again. He was only he wasn't even, he was only like thirty years old at that point, so he was still very much you know useful. And he, he said and, that too. In, I think one of the yeah. documentaries too. Yeah, like like I said, he he's been around. I mean, he he he's held. He's very decorated. You know, he he's he knows the business inside and out. He, I'm sure AEW. He has quite a few friends. I'm pretty sure he's friends with Chris Jericho. I'm pretty oh, sure yeah. he's friends with John Fox. Oh, yeah. I'm sure that I'm sure that other guys like maybe Sean Spears. I'm pretty sure he may have had some some uh, some interactions with Sean Spears, Cody. Him and Cody had that big program back in you know. Well, I say big, but the WrestleMania, uh, the WrestleMania, uh, the WrestleMania moment uh, rivalry. I remember it. Yeah, the where where it, they were basically trading, they were trading the Intercontinental Title between each other. Yeah, and, a table um, match where going to the table meant one of them just stepped on the table. <laughs> that's how that's how Big Show lost it. Uh-huh. Yeah. So it, oh, it's yeah, it's it's it's, it's a, I mean, it's an interesting coup that they that AEW managed to get him mm-hmm. because you know. He was very quiet about this. He didn't say anything about his contract lapsing. He didn't say a thing. Uh, yeah, because... a lot of people in the WWE locker room were apparently surprised by it. Uh, well, yeah, I, I think kind of uncanny, was... kind of uncanny that his last segment was Randy Orton just tearing him a new one. Yeah, verbally. And and, and that, that probably played a part as to he probably felt disrespected. You know, he probably thought, you know, hey, I've been here all these years. I've been in this business for all these years. And I'm getting treated like this, you know, like like I got this guy. That, yeah, he's a he's a he's a generational superstar, but he's gonna talk to me that way, like what the hell? And then yeah. not getting the respect. Big Show's just like Big Show's just like I mean, a, a WrestleMania dark match main event. What is this? <laughs> now, now I have one last. No, question. I have one. Question. No, 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 I have no, one no, last. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Let me let me say this. Oh. One. I have one right, last. Right. Question, but it's for the audience, not for us. It's for the audience. One last big show question. Here it is. When Paul uh, White appears on AEW, will he be a heel or a face? <laughs> 